Buongiorno a tutti. Good morning, good morning everybody. Thank you. Thank you for being here today. This is our second Pambianco PWC Wine and Food Summit. I'm so sorry for the delay, but they told me there is a lot of traffic. There's kind of a traffic jam, so there will be still some people driving here, So, but I think we can start. So today we are going to talk about the future of wine and food, Italian wine and food between international growth and premium. We will have a first part with some studies that were carried out, and this kind of research can also be considered as a basis for our work. In the second part, we will have some stakeholders from the catering sector, wine sector, food sector, who will take the floor. I'd like to call on stage Alessio Candi for the presentation of our research uh, carried out by Pom Bianco. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, David. Uh, well, good morning, uh, everybody. As always, we prepared an introductory document to take stock of the current situation and try to understand in advance what kind of topics will be raised during this morning. So let's start with uh, international growth and premium growth. And uh, we will be talking about selective catering and wine. Let's take a look at the figures in terms of consumption in Italy, but also in the sector of selective catering. We see that uh, in the last uh, three years, uh, 2019, uh, 20, and 21, the dynamics changed a little bit. So there was uh, a drop in terms of consumption, but it was uh, quite persistent and resilient uh, during the COVID period. In 2021, we had a rise in terms of consumption. With lockdown, there was a very strong growth. And then 16 billion is the total consumption in 2021. If we take a look at, uh, in a more detailed way at wine, we can see here production, consumption, and export, 2021 data. The production has increased by 6.1% due to the price rises and not in terms of quantity. Consumption was quite stable, 4.7 billion euros. And the most interesting data concerns well, the international dimension of export, plus 12.5%, up to 7.3 billion euros. So we produce at 2.3 euro per liter, we consume at 1.9 euro per liter, so this is the low range wine, and the highest range is exported. Well, who are the most important wine producing countries at an international level, a global level? We are leaders in terms of volumes with 50.9 billion hectoliters, France and Spain are at the second and third place, and they produce 50% uh, of the wine that we produce in Italy. Also, in terms of consumption, we are uh, third, at the third place. We are the first producers, and we are at place three in terms of consumption. The first country is um, are the United States, then we have France. And the interesting data is that the first 10 countries, top 10 countries, account for 70% of uh, um, world wine consumption. So the top 10 countries account in volume for 68%. So here we have exports and they have gone up all the time from 2017 to 2021. CAGR is 4.4%. Well, in the last year we had 7.3 billion euros and uh, this accounts for plus 12.5%. 12, 12 this is the variation 2020 20, 20, 21. Where do we export? Uh, we export to the USA. USA uh, are the first country in terms of consumption. Then Germany and UK account for 50% of Italian wine exports. 
it is also interesting here to see what kind of increase we had. Germany uh, did not grow a lot, and the U.S. grew by 11 percent in the first quarter of 2021 and 18.5 in 2021. And then we also have U.K. plus 30 percent. Let's move on to selective catering. Here we also have some interesting data. We have selective catering, 110 billion euros at a global level, and the focus is 16 billion euros, more or less 15 percent. This data is confirmed in the Michelin Guide because we have um, a lot of uh, restaurants worldwide, 3,279 starred restaurants worldwide, and Italy ranks third in the world in the number of starred restaurants. Where are they based? Well, the first, uh, the top five regions group, 60% of Italian starred restaurants, uh, Lombardia, Lombardy, Campania, Piemont, Tuscany, and Veneto as well. Let's take a look at the top players, both in the wine sector and in the catering sector. Here we can see the top 10 Italian companies um, in the wine sector in terms of turnover in 2021. Well, if we take a look at the aggregated turnover, it was uh, 2.5 billion euros in 2019, up to more than 3 billion euro in 2021. So in spite of COVID, the um, turnover grew by 27%, uh, by 27%. And we have uh, Botteri, Antinori, and other companies that acquired other companies. And these three million billion account for 27% of the Italian production. So the top 10 Italian companies turn over um, uh, over 3 billion euros uh, and account for 27% of Italian production. So quite a lot. If we take a look at uh, selective uh, catering, uh, here we have uh, the five main Italian companies. We still have very small-sized uh, companies, so 70 billion in five, uh, that is to say uh, 14 billion euros uh, in, in ever, on average. And the, the dynamics are completely different here. We have this kind of cluster that lost 50% of the turnover. Then there was a plus 87% in 2021, and we came back to 2019 level. Well, if we take a look at the commercial catering, we can see the top 10 Italian players, and this is kind of a middle way. So we have um, bigger companies, um, 90 billion euros in terms of turnover, and the dynamics were very peculiar over the last three years. There was, uh, uh, well, a drop in terms of growth in 2020 by 50 percent, and then there was, uh, uh, well, they recovered, uh, well, in 2021 and 2022, but we are still far away from the 2019 data. Well, let's take a look at uh, mergers and acquisitions, M&A. Well, this is another topic which is on the table and we should uh, talk about. In terms of wine, there was a very strong acceleration in the last uh, three years after some years um, in which the market was not focused on that. It was really um, fragmented. And we saw that the concentration and grouping is becoming more and more interesting. And we, there was kind of a wave of mergers and acquisitions. These were the last operations in the end of 2021, at the beginning of 2022. We are talking about funds acquiring companies, companies that are merged with other companies. And we also talk about French groups that come to Italy and buy companies. But we also 
also have uh, IVB, for example, going to the US in order to purchase and to buy other companies. Same applies to catering here. We have commercial catering and selective catering as well. As far as commercial catering is concerned, we have the most important 2021 and 2022 operations and transactions in the commercial catering sector. We had a lot of growth before COVID. In 2020, things changed. Now it's slow, slightly and slowly getting back to the previous level. As far as a selective catering is concerned, we haven't seen a concentration phenomenon yet. We still have a very small sized companies, and we do think that there might be a great chance, a great opportunity for all of us in this market sector, since we see a lot of international players getting into this sector of selective catering and they are doing very well, they are performing very well. What is interesting here is that in the last years, in the last few years, we have luxury and the holdings uh, that performed quite well in the uh, selective catering. We also have Archive, we have LVMH, we have uh, Prada with Marchese and uh, Fidim, that is the holding run by um, Rovati family that is part of Giacomo Milano in Milan. And another important topic uh, we should uh, talk about is crowdfunding uh, deals in the two sectors, and this is quite substantial. So we have financing on the one hand, club dealing uh, and uh, private um, equity um, actors and players. We had seven deals in 2021 with a small evaluation, so to say, 3 billion on average, and 3.3 is the total collection. But in 2022, we are having more deals, um, plus 36% in terms of collection compared to the first month of 2021. Then we have the pre-money average evaluation from 3.1 to 8 billion in 2022, and the average collection is growing, and this is a tool that is being used more and more. Last but not least, you can see here a slide with some figures. This is the online topic which will be um, well better and further explored during the morning. We have Tanico, Vino, Bernabe, Call Me Wine and Extra Wine. It is interesting to see how this sector is becoming more and more uh, relevant. So the aggregated amount was from 60 billion in 2018 to up to 181 billion euros in 2021. Um, with 45% of CAGR, so we still have quite a lot of margin to uh, to catch up to retrieve, but uh, the situation is quite positive, so to say. Well, what can we say? We can say, on the one hand, that we have some macroeconomic trends. On the one hand, we have inflation, rising prices of raw materials, and the difficulty in passing this on to prices with consequent pressure on margins. The second topic, which is connected and linked to the first one, is uh, reduced consumption. We saw that um, by taking a look at the Italian data in the wine sector, rising prices and uncertainty about the coming month affect consumption after the post-COVID rebound. In terms of market, uh, what is happening in the market? Uh, on the one hand, uh, we have a polarization. So we see that there is uh, a consumption that is increasingly divided between high-end luxury and low-end popular products. Those at the high end are, so to say, sheltered from the uh, consumption crisis and the inflation as well, because they are better able to pass on higher costs in prices. So this has uh, well, an impact that is less strong, and there is no such um, increase in terms of costs and prices. Then we also have aggregation and capital opening. So companies group and merge, they seek critical masses to make synergies and set up synergies at all levels in terms of production, organization, and sales. And capital is opened up in order to bring home 
form of funds and resources that can be used to invest in organic and inorganic development with acquisitions. There is this kind of very strong trend that has already started strongly in wine and commercial catering, but it is still um, in its infancy at the beginning in selective catering. So these are the forecasts for 2022 consumption in Italy as far as wine is concerned well will be will undergo kind of a decrease even if the production will be rising and will be increasing and there will be more exports, so we expect um, double-digit growth rate. But the Italian market will still have to go through some difficulties. As far as selective catering, we have well these previous provisional balance, 19 billion euros plus 15 percent. Thank you very much, and I wish you a good work and good job.